Hey everybody, it's Clark Green and welcome to the November Scout Circle. Um, <clears throat> if, uh, if you hadn't noticed, I'm flying solo this evening. So uh, bear with me a little bit. I, had a, I expected Arlen uh, Ward, my usual uh, partner in crime, to join me this evening, but uh, he has been unavoidably delayed at this point. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and soldier on anyway. Uh, I have know a lot of you through the Scoutmaster blog and the podcast, uh, and from uh, being together on uh, Google and Facebook and all of those great places. And as you saw, tonight is going to be uh, a discussion of Weebelos to Scouts. Um, right now, I have to do a little background work because I am getting a double show. There we go. <laughs> One of the things that's really interesting about um, Google Hangouts, it's a great resource, but uh, it, we do this once a month, and we have been doing it now for about a oh, I maybe just about a year, and um, every time we do it something changes. I, I, I signed on uh, early tonight to get the hangout going and everything like that and the screen is almost totally different and some of the directions are a little bit different and some of the things that I'm familiar with are now hidden away in strange little corners of uh, the hangout screen so like I said bear with me and um, we'll make it through. Now uh, Arlen and I discussed the fact that we did not have a guest this time and it was intentional that we didn't try and line up a guest because you're going to be the guest. How about that? Our subject for this hangout is, as I said, Weebelows to Scouts Transition and what we would like to do is we would like to engage as many of our audience members as possible and kind of picking their brain, talking about their knowledge of the subject. Let me give you an overview. Um, you know, if, if, if you're a scout leader, if you're a Weebelows Den leader, Cub Master, Scout Master, you are familiar with the fact that um, Weebelows in uh, Cub Scouting goes for two years, and at the end of the second year, um, the scouts transition over into a Boy Scout troop and most of what they have done at, in Cub Scouts and what they've done in Weebelows has really kind of aimed at uh, making it possible for them to be Boy Scouts one day. Uh, they have a lot of fun and they do a lot of great things in Cubs but moving on to Boy Scouts it kind of helps fill the whole program out for them. They get to go out and, and it is just another big step for them personally. Now, where I live, and I would assume where most of you live, if you're in the United States, um, that transition is accompanied by another transition in a young man's life when he leaves elementary school and goes on into uh, middle school or intermediate school. And that can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, those can be some challenging years. And transitioning into a scout troop can be a bit of a challenge too. There'll be a new set of faces and people that he may or may not know. And he'll kind of be upping his game a little bit. He'll be running with the big boys, so to speak. Um, this, can, this can be a great thing for a new scout. And it also can be rather daunting for them. Uh, that is why. Uh, you need to have, if you're a scoutmaster, if you're the parent of a Weebelow scout, or if you're a Weebelow's den leader or cubmaster, you need to have a pretty solid plan in place um, to transition boys into a scout troop. There's a lot of issues in and out of scouting at that point in their lives, and they really need uh, to kind of be warmed up to the whole thing. So. I would like to see if I could find somebody who would join me and talk about this from the Cub Scout end of the equation. Maybe you're a Cub Master, maybe you're a Weebelows Den leader. So let me tell you how you're going to be able to do that. First of all, 
we need to get you to Google Plus. If you have a Google Plus account, go to Google Plus. Go over on the uh, the this side of <laughs> of your profile page, and you'll see a drop-down menu that will take you to Hangouts on the Air. And then once you're on Hangouts on the Air, uh, on that page, you'll find this Hangout and you should be able to figure out how to request to join the Hangout. Now, failing that, email me at the email address you see on the screen, clark at scoutcircle.org, clark at scoutcircle.org. There's another way that you can uh, let me know that you'd like to join me for a few moments, and that is by asking a question through the Google Plus Hangout. Um, now, if that wasn't confusing enough, <laughs> for a set of directions. Um, there, are, I'll repeat them very quickly. Three ways to make this happen. On your Google Plus profile page, you will see uh, on this side, this side, this side over here. Wait a minute. We're going to get this right. There we go. You'll see on this side over there, uh, there's going to be a drop-down menu. Go to Hangouts. Uh, and request to join this Hangout. Then, uh, the other way to do it, probably the simplest way, email me, clark at scoutcircle.org, and uh, I will uh, invite you to join the Hangout. And, or, uh, if you're on Google+, Plus, um, you can use the question feature on the Hangout uh, itself. So, what I'm looking for right now is somebody who is a Cub Master Weeblow's Den leader who uh, may have some questions or may be able to help us out with uh, that part of the Weeblow's to Scout transition. I've got some good resources that I'll share with you over at scoutcircle.org in the uh, page that'll have this presentation on it and I can show you some of those. Um, while I'm flying solo here, I have to do things like check email and uh, do things like that. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, I found uh, this. I found these resources online. I did a little searching, and one of the ones uh, that I particularly like. Let me get it set up here so I can show it to you. is this one that uh, is published by the Heart of America Council uh, in Oklahoma and um, it has some it has some really interesting information in it that starts out with uh, making some points about kind of some of the things that may be a little bit wrong with what's going on in the Weeblos to Scout transition process. Uh, youth get tired of the Cub Scout program after five years, but they don't have an understanding of the Boy Scout program. Uh, we Below's leaders don't know enough about the Boy Scout program and aren't encouraging their scouts to move on. Um, there's the competition of many different activities for time, especially as a boy is uh, entering into middle or intermediate school. Um, and that, those are factors. Uh, Boy Scouting is maybe doesn't have a reputation as being a cool thing to do. Uh, and, you know, the one that really caught my eye is this one right here. Uh, they are not asked. <laughs> you know, uh, I think a lot of times uh, we miss some families uh, becoming parts, members of our Boy Scout troops by simply not asking. And that has to do with Weeblos and with, with uh, just folks in general. Um, so what is the basis? How do, we, how do we get this to happen for us um, when we want to uh, go ahead and start working that transition of uh, Weeblos to Scouts? Well, it's got to start way before uh, we're talking about Weeblos visits to troop meetings way before second year Weeblos. And one of the great tools for doing that is having den chiefs 
uh, from the troop be part of the Cub Scout pack, be part of the life of the Cub Scout pack. Um, if you're not familiar with what a den chief is, that is an older scout who is in a Boy Scout troop who volunteers his time to come and help a den leader. Uh, it is a position of responsibility that can fulfill some uh, uh, advancement requirements for the scout. Uh, it's a great way for him to begin to learn a little bit about leadership and uh, to be able to work cooperatively with a fellow adult lead with another leader who is an adult and to grow a relationship with the boys that he serves. I would tell you that uh, my in my history uh, in scouting the strongest connections we've had with Cub Scout packs have been through den chiefs. Um, there is training and other materials available for den chiefs, and I would I would recommend that everybody take advantage of that. Uh, the other thing that needs to happen is there just needs to be a solid regular connection between the troop and the Cub Scout pack. Um, there's uh, Boy Scout leaders should always make sure that there's an open offer to help a Cub Scout pack out in any way, shape, or form by uh, getting the scouts to come and help with programs, by helping with programs themselves, by offering their support uh, in answering questions or, or uh, perhaps giving guidance to Cub Scout leaders. But that strong connection, if that exists, we have a much better chance of the Weebelos to Scouts transition going uh, much better. Um, the other thing that is important is for the pack itself has to actually have some kind of initiative behind this uh, because it's very difficult to have a one-way relationship with a Cub Scout pack from my standpoint as a uh, Boy Scout leader, as a Scout Master. Um, it, can be, it can be kind of difficult. Uh, so what we want is we want to see at least some initiative on the part of the Cub Scout pack. Now that you know, Cub Scout leaders and Boy Scout leaders are busy, uh, engaged people who have a lot on their plate and maintaining one more meeting or one more kind of relationship can be a real challenge, but this is a very important one. Uh, if I could sell this for a moment to Cub Scout leaders, you're going to invest four or five years of volunteer time uh, into any scout who becomes a second year Weebelow. And if we're going to have uh, Weebelows just kind of walk off the end of the crossover bridge into thin air, that means that we haven't really been very responsible about trying to make sure that they go on in scouting. So maintaining a relationship with a troop is a very important thing uh, for a Cub Scout, for a Cub Master, um, and for a PAC committee. And I'm sure that uh, if you try hard enough, <laughs> you may have to try two or three times, you will get a response from the troop. And, you know, there's probably more than one troop in your area who'd be happy to have uh, a connection with your Cub Scout pack. And so, keep trying and keep working on that and then you know the other side of this coin is is that the troop committee and the scoutmaster and the people who are volunteering for the troop all need to be tuned in to what's happening with the Cub Scout packs in the area um, and they need to go the distance in maintaining that relationship as well uh, by sponsoring uh, events that are open to Cub Scouts or, or uh, Weebelows, uh, by making sure that uh, the resources that they have in people, uh, in Scouts, um, and sometimes even in money are there and open for the use of the Cub Scout pack. Uh, an interesting facet of this whole transition is uh, when I speak to people who are in Canada or in uh, Great Britain, uh, Cub Scout packs and Boy Scout troops, they're not under a separate 
organization like we have here in the United States with the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, uh, they have a <clears throat> what's called a scout group. So they share a lot of resources together, they share a lot of people, and there's a very strong connection there. And when I talk to leaders from the UK and Canada, uh, and I ask them if they have the same problems in transition that we have uh, between youth of a certain age moving on into a scout troop, they tell me that they actually have a very high percentage uh, as far as their transition goes and that they are able to maintain that because of the kind of built-in relationship that they have. And I think that's a good lesson to us uh, in building relationships between a Cub Scout pack and a Boy Scout troop. Um, I can usually talk straight through just about anything. I'm checking my email. Once again, I'm inviting you to join me here uh, on this edition of uh, the Scout Circle, uh, our November edition, because I am flying solo, and I would love to have you come and join us. There's three ways for you to do that. Email me at clark at scoutcircle.org. Uh, and let me know who you are and use the name that's on your G Plus account and I will uh, get in touch with you um, and invite you to appear right here in front of everybody with me. Um, you can email me to do that. You can use the question feature that is on the uh, Hangouts page. If you go onto your Google Plus profile, and if you go over on the left-hand side of your profile up towards the top, you'll see a drop-down menu. You'll see Hangouts on the air. You click that, follow it, and you will find uh, the November Scout Circle Hangout on the page. There's going to be a lot of Hangouts there, but there's a lot. And there's a question feature there that you can use to send me questions. Um, and if you're interested in uh, joining this conversation, Go ahead and do that and let me know and I will invite you to uh, come and join me in the Hangout. Um, so email me Clark at ScoutCircle.org or use the question feature there. So let me uh, do a couple little housekeeping things here. Um, and go back to sharing some of the resources uh, that I found uh, towards these towards these things <coughs> towards uh, making the making the uh, scout to um, let me get the screen share going there we go towards making the scout to uh, Weebelos to scout transition uh, a little smoother now your district may have hopefully has a district Weebelos transition share and this is somebody who's going to be appointed by the district membership and who is going to try and work with contacting all the PACs and coach Cub Masters and Weebelos and Den Leaders in the transition process and get the district level involved. Um, as I was talking about just a moment ago, there's responsibilities on the troop side. And those responsibilities usually end up in the hands of the member of the troop committee who is looking after membership specifically. Um, and that person needs to have all the information about uh, where Cub Scout troops and who Weebelos Den leaders are and make sure to maintain a good connection with them. Uh, and to promote the participation of Weebelos in the different uh, activities that the troop may offer. Uh, let's talk about what kind of activities uh, a troop can offer uh, to excite and to interest uh, Weebelos into making the transition into the program. A lot of times uh, those are campouts that are designed for Weebelos to participate in or some kind of troop event. We have uh, two specific ones. One happens in February of every year, and that is our Father and Son Weekend. Um, this will be 
perhaps our, I think it's our 27th Father and Son Weekend. We started calling it Father and Son Weekend 27 years ago, but of course, and the name kind of stuck, but of course, moms and everyone is invited. Uh, and this is a weekend uh, where we basically take over one of the local scout camps and uh, we have dining hall service that we provide for ourselves and a really great weekend with a big uh, kind of campery like competition on Saturday. All very good natured and a lot of fun and any Weeblos Dens that are visiting are in their own um, kind of uh, they're, they're in the competition in the Weeblos division and then we have scouts in the scout division and um, just one one of the interesting things that we started doing many many years ago and it's proved to be a lot of fun is that the fathers who and mothers who accompany scouts to the weekend are set up in patrols as well and they compete against the scouts it can it can be a whole lot of fun but this is a big weekend that kind of showcases the troop and helps everybody um, get an idea of who we are and what we do and if you're able to spend a weekend with Weeblos and with their dads or moms you, you've you got a really good opportunity uh, to talk about scouting and to make sure that they understand what goes on and they get to meet your scouts so that's one event we have another one that is basically a town-wide scout day um, and we've uh, used that in the past to invite Weeblos uh, Dens to attend um, and again it's a big event that they can participate in um, and we every once in a while field a request from a Weeblos Den to uh, come and join us for a camping trip or something like that uh, but we try and remain as open and as inviting as possible for all of these things and to engage uh, the Cub Scout packs around us with especially with an eye to those boys who are in the Weeblos program. Um, so let me uh, I once again I'll take a little pause here as I check things out. I want to get you uh, in the hangout here with me. I can't be that interesting, can I? I doubt it. So why don't you give me a uh, email, Clark at ScoutCircle.org, um, and see if uh, we can get connected. If you're on Google Plus, you can go on your Google Plus. Um, you can go on your Google Plus profile. Look in the top left-hand corner for a drop-down menu. Follow it to the Hangouts on the Air page, and you'll find us there. And there's a question an answer um, feature that you should see live with this hangout uh, so so that should help you out there um, so back to some of the resources we were talking about we've determined that we need the Weeblos transition the way that the Weeblos transition is going to work is if there is a good solid relationship between a pack and a troop and this is done with um, by utilizing scouts from the troop to help out with the dens and uh, and be in the position of being den chiefs or uh, especially with uh, first and second year Weeblos that usually works out really well um, that the troop committee and uh, and the scout master the cub master and the pack committee all should really may put high on their list maintaining uh, some connection with each other uh, it's a tall order to fill sometimes because we all are very busy and we have uh, our commitments to scouting are usually pretty fun pretty focused on our own unit and our and the boys that we see every week but maintaining a good relationship between Cub Scout packs and Boy Scout troops is going to help ease the Weeblos transition process a pretty good deal. Um, this whole process uh, is a year-long process. It, it can't be 
something that just happens in you know November, December, January, February. This process has to happen all year long. So do you have a schedule for that? Do you have everything lined out as to what's going to happen uh, in January, February, all the way through the next year as far as these second year Weeblos are concerned? Uh, I think a lot of times it would not take a great deal of effort to add another line item, you know, to the uh, to to our task list, and just make sure that we're staying in contact with Weeblos Dens. One promising practice would be making sure that the families of second year Weeblos and even first year Weeblos are getting your troop newsletter, whether that's an email newsletter or a print newsletter. Um, perhaps you can help, you know. If you have a relationship with Weeblos Den leaders with a Cubmaster, you should be able to gain access to being able to distribute that newsletter to the appropriate members of the Cub Scout pack. Um, we talked about events a little bit. We talked about um, trying to uh, be open as far as support and as far as the relationship goes. Uh, let's get down to brass tacks with something that we all deal with and we've all done in the past, and that is how do we manage a den, uh, Weeblos den, visiting our troop meetings. Uh, this is a requirement for the Arrow of Light, something that uh, Weeblos have to do to be able to earn the Arrow of Light. They need to visit a troop meeting or visit a troop event, and they need to talk to the Scoutmaster very specific in that requirement. Um, I will tell you that we have rung a lot of different changes around uh, having Weeblos visit our troop meeting. Uh, some of them work well and eh, some of them not so well. Uh, we've tried the idea of shaping the entire troop meeting around their visit. In other words, uh, we kind of amp things up a little bit and we go a little bit uh, overboard and showing them what we're all about and we might have something that is a little more exciting and interesting going on at that troop meeting as if we're putting a show on for the Weeblos. I'm not saying that that's a bad idea and if that's working for you that's fine but what I've come to find out is that I haven't seen any more uh, boys come to our troop from Weeblos because we put on a big show for them than I have when they come visit a troop meeting and they just participate in whatever has been scheduled for, the, for that troop meeting. Um, the key in a good Weeblos visit is making sure that your older scouts are prepared for the visit. Guys, we're going to have some Weeblos come visit. Oh, okay. Uh, let's just uh, talk a little bit about what it was like when you were that age uh, and what you would like to see when you come to a scout troop, the kind of attitude that you would like to see, the kind of vibe that you would like to get. And we can talk without um, saying don't do bad things. We, we can talk about doing good things and being welcoming and uh, being supportive uh, for our visitors. Um, I will usually have one of our junior assistant scoutmasters kind of be in charge of the visiting Weeblos and walk them through the, the meeting and talk to them a little bit about the troop. Um, and while they are doing that, we take the parents that are visiting uh, over to a separate room where we meet so that we can talk with them about scouting from a parent's perspective. Now, once again, we've done this in a few different ways. All the way from not having very much at all to say to uh, the Scoutmaster, me, sitting there and talking to them for an hour, or, you know, an hour and 15 minutes, to a very highly polished, well-designed PowerPoint presentation and, that we divided up amongst several of the adult leaders um, and to tell you the truth all of those things pale in comparison in effectiveness 
to the secret that I'm about to tell you. It's not really a big secret because I've written about it on the blog and I think I've spoken on the podcast about it too. But somewhere along the way, we stumbled upon the idea that parents would probably like to talk to some scouts in the troop. And I think we started doing this by introducing the senior patrol leader and allowing them to ask questions of him. And, you know, a scout who's a senior patrol leader is usually a pretty sharp guy. He's usually on his toes and can hold his own with a room full of adults who are going to ask him questions. And we saw that the parents of the uh, visiting Weeblos were, were pretty impressed with that. So the next visit that we had, we kind of expanded the idea. And now our standard operating procedure for a Weeblos visit is, as I said earlier, to let the scouts go with one of the older boys, one of the junior assistant scoutmasters, and work with him. Uh, and he's going to take them through the natural evolution of the troop meeting. Um, we take the parents into another area, and we make them comfortable there. And then we begin, uh, for the next 45 minutes or an hour, giving them scouts to talk to. We'll do a little bit of an introduction on the part of the adults. We'll, you know, introduce ourselves for sure and tell them, a, give them a basic overview of the troop and then tell them the best judge of what it will be like for your son to be part of our troop are the scouts that are currently members. So we're going to be, we would like to introduce you to some of those uh, scouts and give you the chance to talk to them and ask questions of them. And so I begin with a scout who joined the troop within the past year. Uh, usually it was uh, Weebelows and joined in the late winter, early spring of the, of the year uh, before. And I have them come in and I introduce them to the parents. And he sits there and he answers their questions. And um, they, I... I've learned not to prime these scouts at all, just to let them go and to uh, let them, you know, I will go into the meeting room and I will ask the senior patrol leader if he would just pick out one of the guys that joined last year. And there we go. I will explain to him as we, as we walk down the hallway what he's going to be doing for the next few minutes. And uh, usually they're, they're very affable and they're interested in doing it and they go in and they talk to the parents and I listen to them for a couple of minutes and then I'm off down the hall again to get uh, my second year scout and I bring him back and after the first year scouts had five or ten minutes the second year scout sits down and the parents ask questions and I listen to him for a few minutes and then I'm off Yes, you're right, getting the third and the fourth and the fifth year scout, the senior patrol leader, to come by and to talk to them. And if anything, I have to kind of drag them away from the parents because the parents are very interested in talking to these boys. It's a little strange at first for them, and it may be a little strange for the scouts at first, but they warm up pretty quick, and they get to talk about what they are, good, bad, indifferent, doesn't matter to me, they get the honest view of the scouts that are there. And since we began doing this, every single room full of parents that we've done this for, we've had at least one or two. And uh, many times, most of them uh, decide that our troop is where they're going to be. So that's just a hint from the troop side about handling a Weebelows visit. From the PAC side, uh, I think the Weeblos visit should be uh, it should be accompanied by parents in as much as is possible because parents want to parents are curious about knowing about uh, what's going on and things and so that means you're going to have to plan it uh, pretty far in advance to get it on everybody's schedule and get the parents there. Um, I think that uh, maybe you should visit up to three troops. Uh, I think maybe visiting more than three, going to four or five different troops. Like, first of all, 
good on you because I can't imagine having the time to do that. And second of all, how could you possibly differentiate between all five in the end? Uh, so maybe about three. Uh, and you can get a good sense of which three to visit. Visit a big troop, visit a medium-sized one, and maybe visit a smaller one. Um, it's kind of like visiting colleges in some ways. And it'll give you a good idea of what it's like to be in all, all three of those troops. Um, the other piece of it, if I could plead with you as a scout leader, as a scout master for a moment, when you've made a decision, make sure that you, very, that you take the time to tell the troop uh, who you who you've decided for, that you'll actually be coming along. Uh, that's good to know. Uh, a lot of times we go, we have people come and visit, and they uh, the visit is over, and it's been very nice to meet them and everything like that, and then we don't hear from them for weeks. Uh, so it, once you've made a decision, make sure. Make, you know, It sounds very simple, but I, a lot of times it doesn't happen. Make sure to let the troop know. Um, and again in this whole reciprocal re relationship, the troop shouldn't be sitting around on its hands saying, why don't they call? <laughs> you know, you can call them too and check up with them. Um, capturing enough contact information to be able to get in touch with parents who come and visit your troop meeting is a very, very good idea and one that we're a little spotty in being able to do but we'll get a sheet around and make sure that we get an email address or a phone number so that we can check in with them um, in, a, in usually a month's, month's time uh, to see if they've made a decision or if they're still shopping or to answer any questions that may have come up in, in the meantime. Um, it doesn't look like I'm having real good luck here. I haven't been asked any questions and nobody's asked to come here and appear with me. Am I that am I that uh, threatening? <laughs> but uh, let me uh, go back here, check the email again. If you'd like to join me here in the uh, hangout, you can email me, and I will send you an invitation. Uh, if you're joined us a little late and you didn't hear, uh, I have not heard from or seen our buddy Arlen Ward. Um, and I hope everything's fine, Arlen, if you're listening. <laughs> so I'm flying solo tonight, but that's okay. I got big shoulders. I can take care of it. And, folks, I can talk the horns off a billy goat and the feet off an iron pot. It, talking comes very naturally to me, so it's really not a problem for me. might be a problem for you because all you're getting this time is me sitting here yapping at you. Um, so... Let's see. It, I haven't seen any invitations. I haven't seen any questions yet. Send me a question, invitation. Send me a um, you know a vote of support. <laughs> Anything at all um, would be helpful so that I know I know you're out there. I can see that we have a number of viewers uh, through the magic of the Google Hangouts deal, um, but I would certainly like to hear from you. So. You can do this in one of several ways. You can email me right here, Clark at ScoutCircle.org, or you can go on your Google Plus profile, go to the upper left-hand corner. There is a drop-down menu uh, that will take you to the Google Hangouts page. Look for this Hangout, and there is a question and answer feature. If you're on Google+, Plus watching the Hangout, that'll work for you. Um, so I'm going to call. Uh, it is now, we're about 40 minutes into the November Scout Circle, and I'm going to uh, drone on and on and on for about five more minutes, and then we're going to call it an evening, uh, unless we see some questions or somebody would like to join us. Um, as I was saying, some of the resources that I found uh, there's another one, and let me get that up here on the screen for you. Uh, this one is uh, a BSA one 
that uh, it features the Weebelos to Scouts transition plan. And let's get it to where we can look at it. Um, this is a pretty good general overview of uh, the whole subject. If I can get to the uh, timetable here, I wanted to make sure that we saw that. So this is the annual Weebelows to Scout transition timetable for a Scout troop and a Cub Scout pack. And I think it has some really smart ideas in it. Um, get names and addresses and telephone numbers of second year Weebelos. This can be this can be a bit of a challenge sometimes, but this is where the membership chair wants to go to work. Make sure you have a den chief for each Weebelos den. Uh, make sure that they know your program of events coming up. Mail a letter of introduction from the Boy Scout troop to second year Weebelos scouts, you know, individually, um, and introduce them to the troop. Put second year Weebelow Scouts on the mailing list to receive the troop newsletter. I, I think I mentioned that already. Um, camping trips then come along. Uh, make sure that den chiefs have the advantage of uh, getting to council or district training. Set a date for Weebelow Scouts and their parents to visit the uh, troop meeting. Um, and, you know, we don't have to wait for the, the dens to call us we can definitely get in touch with them. Um, and they're saying January for troop meetings. I have them in January, I have them in February, and some in December. Uh, bridging ceremony for the Blue and Gold Banquet. Um, and then we're off and running with uh, a new a troop activity that is, you know, cognizant of the fact that you're going to have a lot of first year new scouts join you um, and then working with them in the transition uh, and seeing if we can get them to summer camp and uh, then we're back to the beginning and that whole calendar starts all over again. Um, I Let me see here. I did get a question and the question is uh, Clark, the program is great. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I needed a little vote of confidence there. Is there any secret to keeping den chiefs? Our Weebelows den have um, had a couple show one time and never returned. <laughs> All right. Let me let me get this down here. Um, that that's I that's a question to conjure with. <laughs> <laughs> if they show, if you've had a couple show up and never come back, you may have to ask yourself what what's going on there. I I'm just kidding though. Uh, I think a lot of times what'll happen is is that a den chief will get assigned to a den. He'll go. He may get along really well with the adults working with the den. He may not. He may get along real well with the scouts in the den, and he may not. And what we have to remember is that den chief is 14, 15, 13, you know, and he's subject to a lot of things that 14, 13, 14, and 15 year olds are subject to. They can be a little capricious at times and they forget everything. If you have one living in your house, uh, they forget everything uh, except the password to Minecraft or whatever it is, right? So um, what I would say the best way to keep a Weebelos den chief around is to make sure that you have a specific set of tasks or you have some kind of set of responsibilities that you are looking for him to do and that those expectations are something that you develop with him. You say, well, you know, what would you like to do? What are you good at? Uh, what do you think you can bring to this? And then to stay in contact, uh, you're you know obviously you're not dealing with an adult with a calendar and a schedule who's necessarily going to um, have that same level of responsibility so far as keeping up commitments. So you know stay in contact, give them a call, and if sometimes uh, I've had den chiefs who wanted to be a den chief in the worst way, and then they were a den chief in the worst way. So. 
uh, it's it's all working with that individual um, to get them there and to help them out. My key thing is really making sure that they have set responsibilities um, that they look forward to doing. So counsel with them a little bit. Ask what they really enjoy. Ask what they would like to take over and what they'd like to do. Uh, scouts that age, when they take on a position of responsibility, really want to have responsibility. Um, and sometimes we're reluctant to give it to them, but you know, give it a shot and then give it another shot and keep working at it. I hope that helps. Um, I got this from Ed Bruce. He said, we just got back today for our council turkey shoot weekend and a shooting sports competition for Ventures, Boy Scouts, and Weeblos. No turkeys are shot, just frozen ones given as prizes. Uh, in our town, we have three Boy Scout Let me see. Okay, I, I kind of messed the question up. In our town, we have three Boy Scout troops, two Scubs, Cub Scout packs, and a ski, Sea Scout ship. Say that three times fast, and I'm not going to. Uh, a couple of years ago, we started camping together. Well, we don't get all the units together. The Weeblos either camp or stop by and they can see how some of our scouts units camp. It's great to showcase the patrol method. Yeah, um, I definitely agree. Uh, that is, that again, within this whole complex relationship, uh, taking every advantage you can to making sure that Cub Scouts, for, of all ages, get to see what Boy Scouts are doing. That's, that's pretty important. That first question I answered about keeping um, Weevilos den chiefs involved came from Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer, I'm, I'm still sorting through this uh, whole question thing here. And I have to keep talking and uh, doing this at the same time. How am I doing? Hmm? <laughs> um, Ed went on to say, Ed Bruce went on to say, we also invite them to other camping trips and we've been having them come to a meeting before the Blue and Gold. Well, yeah, all of that is going to be important to, to making this happen. Um, back to this one resource that I had here from uh, the BSA. This one actually goes into a great deal of depth with uh, explaining all of the troop responsibilities, the, the district responsibilities, um, the unit commissioner responsibilities who can be, by the way, if you're a unit commissioner, you can be a tremendous force for good in the Weeblos to Scout transition process if you pay attention to uh, what's happening and what's going on and what that relationship is. As I said, the PACS responsibilities, keeping track of these things, I think a lot of times we let things kind of go and we're, we're not... Um, trying very hard at actually keeping track of you know the approaches that we make and the programs that we use and what the results are. Um, there's also samples of transition ceremonies, bridge crossing ceremonies as they're commonly called. Um, so quite a bit of information in uh, this document and I'll make it available at scoutcircle.org it's called the Weeblo to Scout Transition Plan. You may be able to find it on Google just as quickly as I did. Um, and let me take a look here in the library. There were a couple more here. Um, here's another interesting uh, aspect that I wanted to spend the last couple of minutes talking about. A, here's a Weeblo's to Scout Transition Parents Guide. Um, and this basically is kind of like an FAQ that, you know, talks a little bit about scouting and is looking at things from a parent's perspective. Now, I've noticed uh, there are a number of things online uh, that are, you know, the questions you should ask when you visit a troop uh, on a visit with your Weeblos um, and the things that you need to know about a troop. Um, I had a message from somebody the other day who uh, the visiting Weeblos wanted to see <laughs> wanted to see their 
the uh, it wasn't the visiting Weeblers. I think it was the uh, it was the adults, the the Weeblers, Dan Leader and everything. They wanted to see the troops, uh, uh, you know, books and to to kind of look into the finances and how things were being administered. And um, I think that parents need really good, solid information. That's one resource that you may find useful in doing that. But every troop should have some kind of informational document that they can hand to parents. Um, we have something that is, you know, one page. I'm a big fan of one page documents uh, that explains all of the important stuff about our troop and what the whole transition process is and things like that, including, you know, costs and, and, uh, the a typical schedule of our yearly events and things. So these are all these are all things I think are very important um, to easing the whole process. And when we are talking about uh, decisions as to what troop a Weebelos will choose, we are talking about uh, probably sixty or seventy percent in most cases the parents decision aren't we because uh, you know parents are going to definitely inform the decision that a scout makes in those matters I hope you've enjoyed uh, listening to me uh, go on and on and on about uh, a relatively obscure scouting subject but it is my uh, it is my forte <laughs> uh, once again I have several PDF resources that I will make sure are available over at scoutcircle.org and um, I'm gonna count to three and we're all going to say together Arlen where are you ready one two three Arlen where are you I hope everything's okay they've been having wildfires and tremendous floods and mountains falling on people and all kinds of crazy stuff happening out in Colorado that's where Arlen is I am in the uh, safe uh, zone of the mid-Atlantic <laughs> in Pennsylvania so uh, we, we rarely have giant catastrophes um, well I, w I won't I won't uh, I wouldn't say that knock wood right so come and join me at uh, scoutmastercg.com and listen to the Scoutmaster podcast I really appreciate you uh, joining me tonight I appreciate the questions Ed and Jennifer I hope we were able to help you out a little bit. Uh, and before I go, keep your ears and eyes open uh, at scoutmastercg.com this week. The book is almost, almost, almost ready. But it is going to be published, and it will be available um, in pre-publication sales this week. So keep your eyes open. All right? Thanks once again, folks. We will see you at uh, Scout Circle in December.